Hello, hi, this is Dr. Karen Perez again with another video. In this video, we'll be discussing about glycoma. So, just a few um, points I wanted to show you about the eye as it relates to glycoma. We'll be talking about the optic nerve. We'll be talking about the optic disc. We'll also be looking at the anterior chamber and also the drainage system and the angle of the um, anterior chamber chamber section um, between the the iris and the cornea okay so keep in mind that the optic nerve is a has a bundle of about 1 million individual fibers and what it does it transmit visual signal from the eye to the brain and it's most importantly um, important for central vision even though in addition to that peripheral vision also. So let's look at the difference between an open angle glycoma and a closed angle glycoma. As you can look between the cornea and the iris, for open glycoma, the drainage system is open. The drainage hold, the drainage hold is clogged and the drainage angle is much more open as in comparison to the closed angle glaucoma. So in the closed angle glaucoma, the drainage hole is blocked. Now, what happened when we talk about glaucoma is that we have fluid flowing through the anterior chamber and it, because the drainage hole is either clogged or blocked it's not able to circulate thus there's an increase in pressure that the pressure then is then placed on the optic nerve which then causes problem so let's look at the primary open angle glycoma first so it is a slow clogging of the drainage canal as we mentioned before this is a lifelong condition um, with with the area between the iris and the cornea it is actually wide open or it is more open than the closed angle glycoma in addition primary open angle glycoma is one of the most common type of glycoma um, and more common than the closed angle glycoma. So who is at risk? Individual who has um, intraocular pressure caused by other pre-existing disease, individual with myopathy, individual with diabetes, African-American are more at risk for a primary open angle glycoma, old, old age, hypothyroidism, high hypertension, cardiovascular disease, family history of um, primary open angle glaucoma, and prolonged use of corticosteroids can also cause it. So some of the subjective um, data that can be collected from the patient, they'll complain that maybe they don't have any pain at first because most of the time it's during an annual assessment or routine checkup that this is, this is noted because Primary open angle glycoma is of gradual onset, thus no pain, there is no change in vision at first. However, as the disease progress, they may have bilateral peripheral vision loss and poor night sight vision. And in addition to that, as it progresses further, in late stage, you'll complain of halos around the light and central vision loss. Now, as a practitioner, what you notice is that you will have an IOP greater than 21. And in another slide, you're going to see 20. The book varies. I use um, several different books, but just keep in mind, sometimes you'll see 21. Sometimes you'll see 20 based on the literature that you're looking at. You also see an increased cup to disc ratio um, size. Now, in, in looking at how would you identify the cup to disc ratio size? So again, remember we said that pressure is put for caused by the inability of the drainage hole to drain the fluid. 
pressures build up and pressure is placed on the optic nerve. Now, in a normal, healthy optic nerve, what you will see is a disc size, which is much greater round. And inside here, you will see the optic nerve. So let's look at this diagram here. This would be like the optic nerve and this would be like the disc. But in someone that has glycoma, you would see that the optic nerve is larger, taking up a lot more space on the disc. And this is called glycotomous cupping. So with someone who have glycoma, you would see that the cup to disc ratio is, ratio is actually greater than 0 0.3. Now, what is the treatment? So the first line of treatment is either beta blocker or prostaglandin. So if they try beta blocker and it doesn't work, then they try prostaglandin and it doesn't work. They may combine both for treatment. So if medication, um, if the medications are not effective to control the ocular pressure, then they may do surgery. So differential diagnosis, um, tension glycoma, optic nerve pits, anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, compressive lesions of the optic nerve, or post-hemorrhagic um, shock of the optic neuropathy. Now, we're going to move into closed-angle glycoma. Now, just to look at the diagram that we looked at earlier on that, in closed angle glycoma, you can note that the angle between the iris and the cornea is actually smaller. Now, again, the drain is the drainage hole is blocked. Now, the etiology blocked drainage, drainage canal, resulting in a sudden increase in intraocular pressure. This develops very suddenly versus primary open, which is gradually onset. This is an emergency. Immediate uh, medical attention is needed. And as I mentioned earlier on, that there is a closed or narrow angle between the iris and the cornea. Now, individuals who are, who are between age 40 to 50 and even greater are at greater risk. Female are at greater risk for um closed angle glycoma and Asian as in opposite from primary who's African American is high at risk in closed angle glycoma Asian are at risk more than African Americans. So risk factors are farsightedness, shallow anterior chamber um, issue, family history, it could be that they're on medication where they're taking antihistamine, they're taking antipsychotic meds, antidepressants, or even anticholinergic meds. Now, the patient will complain of um, severe unilateral ocular pain. And this is very important that you can identify the difference between primary. With primary, the, um, the issue is bilateral. So like they will have bilateral uh, peripheral loss, vision loss. In this case, in closure angle, they have severe unilateral ocular pain. They may have blur vision, photophobia. They may see halos around the light, which halos in primary is one of the late sign. They may have headache. They may have nausea and vomiting. Um, in the objective area, while anything over 21 is considered increased intraocular pressure, but with close angle glycoma, you will see the pressure even between 40 to 80. Now, they may have corneal lipid edema. They may have conjunctival hyperemia. They may have uh, pain with eye movement and also shallow um, anterior chamber will be noted for these individuals. Differential diagnosis, um, anterior orbital compartment syndrome could be a differential diagnosis, traumatic hyperemia, conjunctivitis, it could be abrasion of the corneal, it could be herpes zoster of the eye, it could be, uh, again, 
any other different type of glycoma, such as um, primary open angle glycoma. So the treatment as in medication is similar for the uh, close angle glycoma, which they will try the beta blocker. They will try the, um, they will do alpha anonergic medication. They'll do prostaglandin also. And sometimes they may have to do a systemic medication like mantenol. In addition to that, then they will do surgery. And this will is this type of surgery is different from the primary open angle glycoma, which is the iridi the iridiotomy. And they will do that surgery for individuals who actually have close angle glycoma. Now screening um an eye examination starts at age 40 by annually uh, but i want to say that the u.s preventative services task force they do not have they do not recommend any type of screening per se for individuals who do not have any risk however an option that they say is that they can do screening at 65 but there's no evidence that supports um any screening for individual who has no risk factor and even younger than 65. now when to consult when do you refer to the hospital so for angle closure glycoma this requires immediate attention um, and also medication and they should be referred to an ophthalmologist for surgery treatment immediately for open angle this require consult or they should be referred to an ophthalmologist for examination and monitoring of the condition of the of the eye in terms of follow up so angle closure glycoma should be the individual should follow up with follow up with the ophthalmologist in open angle glycoma about every 3 to 6 months the course of treatment is long term the aim is to prevent blindness because again remember that the central vision as the disease progresses and get worse is affected and then we have um, issues with the peripheral vision some of the complication is that it, there may be an atrophy of the iris um, it, the person can get blind if it's not treated and then we also have where they can have the cornea damage i hope this video was helpful here are my references and i if you have any questions any suggestions or comments please make these comments into the comment box. Thank you so much. I hope this video was very helpful.